Strangers of Paradise. This isn't the one with the Kill Chaos guy, is it? Yes, it is. Oh god. Why does the vo why does it sound so bad? Is it all in my head? This guy sounded okay. The guy in the chair sounded okay. What is this guy? This guy's voice acting sounds so bad. Am I, am I just crazy or? Just tell us about the crystals. Those who are to forge the future mustn't be concerned with triviality. And cut to the chase. Sarah, I, I'd like you to have this. But this is very special to you. You'll just forget. I won't. Why are JRPG's trailers so fucking overloaded? I'm about to have a seizure. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck I'm watching. Or what is even happening? I don't know what the story- I don't know anything. It's like the opposite of American trailers where they give away the whole story. And here, I don't know what anything is about at all. I'm so lost. Is all the footage we just saw in 30 FPS with the trailers in 60 FPS? It felt like this was the only 60 FPS part of the trailer. Or am I just not perceiving it? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? All the graphics were 60? Maybe they were and I just wasn't paying attention or something. Maybe just the la that last cinematic wasn't. No, I don't think it is. Because when the transitions are happening, the transitions are clearly at 60. But I don't know if this is at 60. Can you see the difference? Or am I correct? Maybe there's something else going on? Watch. I won't. There's this and then what? Look, now the transition is like, I can't tell. I don't know. But my monitor is also 165. So maybe I'm used to seeing things at 120 or 140 and I'm not, now I don't know what 60 looks like anymore. I'm not sure. What a clusterfuck of a trailer. I'm 80% positive. Namura is in charge of that new Final Fantasy game. That guy's like crazy, isn't he? Isn't he the one that did like Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3? Dude, I tried to watch because I was curious because I think I, I don't even remember if I beat Kingdom Hearts 1 now. Now I'm starting to doubt myself. Thought I did, but maybe not. I tried to read like plot synopses of like Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. I don't say this lightly. That game might be more complicated than the Metal Gear Solid franchise, unironically. I have no fucking idea what the fuck is going on. I don't know. But apparently that same guy was in charge of Final Fantasy 15 as well and the Final Fantasy 7 remake. I wonder how many of my fans out there have never played the Metal Gear Solid game games, but they watch me play all of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, because I feel like I need to play 3. It is such a good game. Fuck! Metal Gear Solid 3 is such a good game. You won't even be ready for it. Going from Metal Gear Solid 2 to 3, it's the biggest tone shift of a game in the world. It is so weird, because 2 is this, like, plot twist, crazy shit, and 3 is a very simple story. With, like, an, an unexpected, like, okay, a war game is gonna have, like, some plot twist, but it's so simple, it's so good. Fuck! What's the best Metal Gear Solid? Metal Gear Solid 3 is the best Metal Gear Solid. It is. Nobody can fight you on that. But it's also really safe. If you want to be edgy, you might argue that like 2 is the best because of subversion of x or some crazy shit. Or 1 is the original. Nobody would argue 4 is. 5 is for Zoomer fucks that are just crazy. Did you think 5 was at least fun? 5 had the best gameplay, bar none. The story was dog shit. Metal Gear Solid Waifu. Oof, that's a good one. I don't know, probably that triple agent, quadruple agent girl in Metal Gear Solid 3. Why was Metal Gear Solid 4 bad? Metal Gear Solid 4 wasn't bad. It was just like... Like, imagine you had like, a, imagine your little brother destroyed the fuck out of your room and your parents are going to be home in five minutes and you didn't have time to properly clean it up. So you have to put everything so that it looks like it was supposed to be that way the entire time. But in reality, somebody fucked it up completely. That's like what Metal Gear Solid 4 story is like. Dude, Molina doesn't care about her name that much. It's driving me fucking crazy. I'm like, what do you want your new name to be? What do you want your shit to be? She's like, oh, I don't care. Whatever. It's like, Bro, it's your fucking name. Think about this 100%. It's going to be a huge pain in the ass to change it later. Are you 1 million percent sure? Players like Tabor are the heart and soul of the organization. It was refreshing to see him get some love for his actions. Good job, Tabor. Tabor Pepper is a long snapper. Long snappers are like military snipers. They are precise. They spend their professional lives looking at upside down targets. It's difficult to describe the inner calm, athleticism, and concentration required to execute a snap, hold, and kick. But here, the 49ers special team squad completed the mission in subpar weather conditions to advance to the conference championship. Was Tabor in the last play? What was the last play of the game? Was it a kick? Oh, oh my god. A field! goal. Good, Tabor. Look at you. You literally won. You literally won the game. I think the true props go to the catcher. That is true, because Tabor's snap was a little bit high. It was a little off. I was kind of wondering, but nobody seemed to catch that. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. What's the name of the guy that catches the ball for the kicker? The unsnapper? The long catcher? <laughs> Tabor catching? Why are you sending anything about having to the Do you think it plays that's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, I don't even know what was being said. Am I going deaf or is it just like super echoey? I can't hear anything of this. Oh, is is inflation a political liability? It's not a liability, it's a great asset, inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. The Western Journal, equipping readers with the truth. Why is it, this has gotta be some mindfuck thing. Why is it that anytime I see a site have like truth or whatever anywhere in like the headline, I always feel like it's gonna be full of bullshit. <laughs> is that, here it is, the most amazing scene in television history. Oh God, why, dude, I never watched enough of this show to see see this shit. <laughs> the mind palace. <laughs> I 
The show is a banger? I don't think I'd be able to take it seriously. <laughs> like, could, really? It gets stupid as fuck in the end. Average Destiny viewer, true. This is not, however, this is not the most amazing scene in television history. Not even close. The most amazing scene? Oh God, fuck. What was the name of this cringe ass fucking show? This is it. Turn your computers off if you can't deal with extreme cringe, okay? I'm giving you a fair warning. This is it. Uh, I've got a text message saying the president is speaking tonight in a few minutes. Do you know anything about this? The internet says he's speaking on a matter of grave national security. Yeah, I've got the same thing. I've got a flight that's been canceled. Does that have anything to do with what you're talking about? Has there been a terrorist attack? No. Well, wait, there's been a terrorist attack? No, there hasn't. I've got an email saying we're at war with Libya. Nope. You guys know what's going on, don't you? They're so important. Oh my God, they're Folks, so important. There hasn't been a terrorist attack. None of your friends and family are in danger. The president will be speaking in just a few no. minutes. No. Listen, there they're just nervous I don't because care. you do not take over control of the cabin. They're getting emails and going online and seeing. You do not take over control of the cabin ever, ma'am. Is there a problem, sir? Yeah, I was just asking how paranoid you have you have to be, sir. Sir. Captain, my name is Don Kiefer. That's Elliot Hirsch, and that's Sloan Sabbath. We work for Atlantis Cable News, and we wanted you and your first officer and flight attendant crazy lady to be the first ones on this plane to know that our armed forces killed Osama bin Laden for you tonight. You're serious? Yes, sir. <laughs> This one was pretty bad too, but that, 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 one, that one takes the cake. So you like Rick and Morty, huh? Yeah. I got into it because of my son, but now I love it too. Wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad too, but the other one was just maximal cringe. That wasn't that bad, Destiny. You've lost your cringe tolerance. You're just wrong. The God scene? No oh. way. I don't think this is as cringe because I'm pretty sure the people writing this show are just doing dumb shit. I'm getting hacked. No, no, this is major. They've already burned through the NCIS public firewall. Well, isolate the node and dump them on the other side of the router. I'm trying. It's moving too fast. Oh, this is not good. We're using our connection to the Aethos database. Sever it. I can't. It's a point attack. He or she is only going after my machine. It's not possible. This is DOD level 9 encryption. It would take months to get built. Hey, what is that? Video game? No, Tony, we're getting hacked. They get in Abby's computer. The entire NCIS network is next. I can't stop him. Do something, McGee. I've, I've never seen code like this. Oh, oh where'd it go, Abby? I didn't do anything. I thought you did. No, I did. Basically, the key to this show was any time that girl was on screen, there was just gonna be some crazy shit. Every time. She was like the key to there being some crazy shit on screen. Oh my god. What's Scott's tots? <laughs> Why did you promise that? To change lives. I've made some empty promises in my life, but hands down, that was the most generous. <laughs> just tell me. Worm Chad. What is this? It oh, gym videos. Yes. Let's take a trip down memory lane and reminisce for a second. You got your fake natties, your celebrities lying to the masses, Kirikos Grizzly, an absolute classic on this channel, but I have never, and I mean never seen anything quite like what we're going to take a look at today. And at first glance, you guys are probably going to be like, what's the big deal? All all I see is this dude recording his powerlifting progress. He likes to share his lifting achievements with the world. This man has continued to defy the law of physics and biology. In fact, he's ascended to a greater being known as the Worm Chad. You see, the Worm Chad's back is made out of adamantium steel and liquid vibranium. If I'm being honest, there are no words to describe this man's stupidity, yet genius at the same time. It is so goddamn dumb, but so so impressive all at the same this time. This guy comes from the school of like Charlie, Moist Critical, and the Seth guy, right? It's like the same voice. I'm not even mad because he knows something that we all don't. This caption right here, this is where it all started. Old training footage, five reps of 90 kilograms, is like the origin story for a goddamn fitness industry super villain. You're not prepared to see this man's form. Started from the bottom, kept going downward anyway. <laughs> just, just wait. <laughs> Come here, Lolo, empty it. Come here. Yep. Come here. Come here, Lolo. 
Yeah, oop! Oop! Ah! <laughs> oop! Ah! Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. My back hurts watching that. Oh my god, it gives me anxiety seeing his back like this. Maybe like, because he's doing so many things wrong. Maybe like two wrongs do make a right. Maybe they're like balancing themselves out, right? Why? What are we doing? So far his deadlift is not off to a good start. Maybe his squat is a little better. Different movement. Once again, you want to keep your back nice and tight, neutral. You want to explode out through your heels. Let's see what he's got going on here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he squats down. Does squats it even does it even count as a squat if you do that thing at the end? Is it? <laughs> There's a name for an exercise where you just lean over and come back up. I don't know what it's called. I don't know if it counts as a squat though. So but fuck it, he dropped his legs, dude. That's a competition lift. Oh, good mornings, maybe, yeah. He squats down, has some butt wink, that's what you call it, and then does a good morning with the bar and just stands up. Should just let him talk. This guy's just a god. He might he must have like a thing there, he must have some defect or some physiological thing in his back, right? That's the only way to explain this I love how he puts one frame of his neck damage too and there's no comments on this We are looking at a social media gem judging by the thumbnail of this next video. I, I just know I know what to expect <laughs> care he does not give a flying fuck about his back and his friends love it they're laughing they're cheering him on am i missing something here <laughs> <laughs> this absolute mad lad is going for an all-time rep pr <laughs> Do you think they're fake old plates? Do you think maybe? And it's all a meme? <laughs> this man is seeing stars. He's just pitch black vision. Everyone is just saying, why? Yeah! 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 I, Jesus. People kind of take that and kind of hand wave away these very legitimate concerns, like security concerns that Russia has when it comes to NATO, like expanding further into this region and parking nukes right on their border. And then say they're like, well, none of that gives them the, like, the right to just arbitrarily invade this country. But like the only people that are actually saying that, Russia has not said we're going to invade the Ukraine. No one has said this. The only people that seem to be saying this are people like Rosemary Barton and like people in the media, people in politics are t talking endlessly about this, despite there's no actual evidence that like this this is actually going to happen. They want to though, but but according to who? That's it. This is the problem. According to who? I don't doubt that there's people in Russia that still view this guy. Um, this guy's foreign policy takes a dog shit. I don't know why we're watching this guy. I remember this. I remember this guy on Twitter. The U.S. allied with Nazi Germany after World War II. This guy just has perpetually gives like dog shit. It's just whatever is anti the United States, he'll always support it. That's it. That's like his whole position basically. Listen, Nate Silver says some crazy shit sometimes, guys. Some of the most efficiently run restaurants in the world are at casinos because it's the one place where wasting your time costs them money. This is absolutely not true. <laughs> or maybe it depends on how you define efficient. I'm pretty sure restaurants at casinos are just seen as like cost sinks. It's like a cost of doing business. You dump money on them to incentivize people to gamble more. I don't think they're more efficiently ran than any other restaurant. They're probably less efficiently ran because they're just seen as like dumps for money. I'm pretty sure uh, casino restaurants are ran pretty shittily. We were always told we run restaurants at a cost loss to keep people there. Yeah, basically, yeah. Have you ever worked at a casino restaurant before? That was literally my casino job. Is this communist business owner right about the risk of owning a business? Here are all the risks. I assume. Um, the business is legally a separate entity than me with its own FEIN and all of the business's debt is taken out under the business's name with that FEIN and I'm not a personal guarantor on any of it. Um, so... There is no fucking way that you are going to be able to get it a loan on a newly created business without being able to guarantee some of it personally. Just think logically about that for a second. Like, oh, here is a Destiny 2 GG LLC. Hi, bank. I have no credit history. I have no assets. I would like to take it a loan for two hundred thousand dollars. What the fuck? Why the fuck would the bank lend you that money? You, you, ha you somebody's gonna have to guarantee something if the if the bank doesn't have an established credit history or something, right? I guess if the business folded, I'd lose my job, just like all of my employees, and then we'd all just go on unemployment because I'm eligible for that. Uh, because I'm on payroll, like a regular employee would be. So then I guess uh we'd all just go get new jobs, all of us, and that's it. That's 
that's that's the risk. Ha <laughs> ha. Now maybe leave comments about shit you actually understand, because you look like a fucking idiot when you say shit like this. Capitalist bootlicker bullshit. There's no fucking. We're get her on stream. We can talk about business structures or finance all day long. You, no one has any idea what the fuck you're talking about. You really think you can just start a separate legal entity and just take a whole bunch of loans out in the name of that entity with no fucking established credit history? What the fuck are you talking about? Is there is there a limited is there a limit? For, do you have to be the personal guarantor or whatever of all credit or all debt or whatever for an LLC? Obviously not. But that's only if the business already has like an established history. Just think, just think logically for like two seconds. Just think logically. Did she say that her business has no credit history? No, but if you've got a business with a rich credit history, then you take out loans, of course you're gonna be shielded to some extent from liability, but you spent a lot of time building that business. So losing that entire business would suck. And the, when you first start up your first business, you are gonna have to probably take on some risk. Risk, man, your boss is just shitty. He's taking advantage <clears throat> of you. Here we start explaining how to be an anti-capitalist business owner. Say one day you have more work than your body can physically do on its own. And maybe your friend is out of work and rent is coming up and they're desperate for cash and they're looking for a job. The second you say, hey, I've got some work you can do, I'll pay you. You've created a system of capitalism, which is weird, right? Because in the moment it might feel like the right and easy and obvious thing to do. And that's because we all have to survive within a system of capitalism. Once you have employees, by definition, your business ceases to be anti-capitalist. And capitalism is set up to help you more than your laborer. Traditional capitalist structures say you pay your laborer as little as possible their work generates revenue for the business that revenue creates profit at the end of the year and you keep that profit regardless of how much work you did all year i can't undo capitalism but i can try to so then i didn't hire my friend i just let her starve and fucking die but at least i didn't explode her at the end of the day buy my etsy bracelets anytime i hire someone they make the same hourly wage as me any profit at the end of the year is reinvested back into the business usually we break even or take a loss though it minimizes my capacity to exploit my workers but it's still capital okay just because your employee makes the same amount of money you do doesn't matter and you know that because i guarantee you this stupid fuck probably has 15 tiktok videos about how like oh jeff bezos only makes seventeen thousand or seventy thousand dollars a year but that's because most of his compensation is in stock in his company well if you are reinvesting the profits into your business and you own the business that means that you are still owning those profits what are you talking about it doesn't matter if you pay yourself the same as your employees your employees don't have equity in your business unless you're actually buying them into it like any profit at the end of the year is reinvested back into the business that i have sole ownership of and that is the main difference that you see with something like mondragon and something like, like Defector and, and uh, all of these other formations that are more democratically organized where the goal is different. The goal is to just survive, have fun, whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> just have fun working, guy. That's the goal. I love working. So much fun. Every job is going to be fun under socialism, guys. Because if you're not having fun, they're going to fucking shoot you. Just like we all touch shit before. None of, none of... No, I've never shit in a tissue before. You shit, you touch shit every single day if you shit. Like, you don't wipe yourself? It got shit in the tissue when you wipe yourself. You don't know how shit to get the... Why are you touching the shit? The tissue no. is for the shit. That's what I'm saying. You, you grab shit no, all the time. No. No, you're tissue. not saying that. You don't. Yeah, you you're wipe. You wiping. You grab the shit. You don't grab. Why are you grabbing hold shit? Hold on, hold on. Do you got so shit you stuck me... in your ass while hold you're on, taking? Hold on. Huh? Are you telling me that y'all just let the doodle fall in the toilet? Y'all don't catch it every time. Yo, <laughs> I am about to leave, bro. How do y'all take a shit? I must have seen this shit wrong. <laughs> my nigga, I've been catching my shit all these years. Now I'm more disgusted than like I feel like I can't continue. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm my stomach. So is hold tired. on. So y'all just sit there and shit right come right out. No way. What happens if you got the no runs way. or something like that? Yo, what do you do then? That shit, you wash your hair. Why do you think people wash their hands? <laughs> Yo, you shit in your hand, bro? With <laughs> tissue. This is worse than I thought. People are calling us a troll, but like, I'm pretty sure 40% of you guys, you like scrunch up your shit like in a ball and then you stand up and you wipe yourselves. So, I, I mean, I'll believe anything at this point. Look at the people in here. Who does this? 13%. You're actual subhumans. Wet wipes or dry toilet paper? I'm pretty sure wet wipes can't go in the toilet. I think you'll destroy your toilet, your septic system doing that. I remember there were a couple girls early on. I don't know if this was ever like a thing. I don't know if I just got really unlucky or if somebody published like a fucking life hack or some bullshit about how like if you wipe yourself with baby wipes, it's cleaner than using toilet paper or whatever. I remember there were two girls in my past that I went down on and they used baby wipes. And the second I was there, all I could think about was Nathan. It was the most disgusting fucking, it was the biggest turnoff in the world. I don't know if that's unique to parents or if anybody else ever had that experience before but as soon as i smelled the like the baby wipe smell i was like what the fuck this is not what i want to be thinking about right now this is the most disgusting feeling in the world Ugh. funny joe rogan myocarditis thing i think we've already watched i don't know if i watch this on stream or off stream but <laughs> i think i would know what clip this is <laughs> 
This guy, whoever went on the show, he copied my talking point. For young boys in particular, there's an adverse risk associated with the vaccine. It's like yes. a two to four fold increase in the instances of myocarditis. Yes, but you know what? Hospitalization. The, you know that there's COVID. an increased risk of myocarditis in among that age cohort from getting COVID as well, which exceeds the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. I don't think that's true. I don't think it it's is. true. I don't. No, no, no. I don't think it's true that there's an increased risk of myocarditis from people catching. What do people think myocarditis? is an inflammation of like the myocarditis i think is the muscles of the heart and pericarditis is the lining of the heart the inflammation is a is a, is a uh, immune system response like what do you think the what do you think the um inflammation is what do you think it is why would you not have inflammation if you have an infection w why would you think that's like so impossible like, I, 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 did you just read the word myocarditis that you associate with like heart attacks you're like oh god people think myocarditis means you're dying when somebody says myocarditis they think fuck i'm gonna have a fucking heart attack and fucking die i think it's true that there's an increased risk of myocarditis from people catching COVID that are young versus increased risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. No, there is. There's both. Pro well, let's look that up because I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's myocarditis is more common after COVID-19 infection than vaccination. <laughs> is this with children? Yeah, this we're talking about young people. Men and boys aged under 30 after this is what it says here. With, with well, children what about... is the issue. Well, no, we were talking about 15-year-olds. Well, we're talking about young children. Male so, child. Yes, 12 to 17. 12 to 17, more likely to build myocarditis within three months of catching COVID at a rate of 450 cases per million infection. This compares to 67 cases of myocarditis per million at the same time following their second dose of Pfizer. Yeah, so you're about eight times likely to get myocarditis from getting COVID than from getting the vaccine. That's interesting. Now, that, that is said, not what I've read before. This is, and this is also something that drives me crazy. I'm talking to people that say they do their own research. When, when I say something that I'm pretty sure it's like, this is pretty common knowledge. Like most people do that. like, I've never heard that. What have you spent all your time reading about or researching? What, how could you not have stumbled across that fact in any of your, re like, did you never see the word myocarditis and wonder, I wonder what that means. And you just like Wikipedia. That's all I do. I'm like, oh, well, what is myocarditis? Oh, well, let's look it up on Wikipedia. Or, but also it's like, when even when we're reading these things, it's like, what are we getting this from? Is this from well, the VAERS the report? But even <laughs> from the VAERS reports, when they... Have you seen Sabrina's indirect response to you? Who the fuck is Sabrina? And I'm already blocked by this Twitter. <laughs> Oh, this person. I doubt she even knows who I am. Oh, well, I ever, actually, I guess she's already preemptively blocked my Twitter, so maybe she does know who I am. Hey, everyone. I'd like to address the situation with Gus for the hopefully final time. When I uploaded my video last October, my intention was to share a story, my sh share my story as a part of my own healing, so hopefully to be better understood by peers, audience, friends, etc. I didn't name Gus in that video, and I didn't intend for things to evolve. Oh, come on. How fucking stupid do you have to? Why well, didn't say his name? Come the fuck on, dude. You, Gus, isn't Gus a pretty huge YouTuber? Doesn't he have, like, millions of subscribers? How, how big is this guy? on, okay, 3 million subs. This is a famous guy. What did you, what? My goal wasn't to vilify my ex, but share a very real struggle of mine that at the time felt invisible. Since then, there have been public statements, but no attempts to reach out to me privately. Every time Gus and myself address the situation, it was a pit in my stomach. Therapy has helped, but navigating the situation is difficult and stressful nonetheless. The apology message and recent apology video are not sufficient and don't accurately reflect my experience, but I personally do accept the true, Jesus Christ, the true accountability may never come. Thus far, my instinct has been to correct the record as it hurts to see him give a false impression of the events that took place, but unfortunately, this hasn't brought me the peer Wait, you're the one that made it pu Wait, I could be wrong. Who made it public first? Did Gus make public comments on this before she did? Or did she make public comments before he did? She was the first one. Okay, yeah. With that, I won't be engaging any further on that topic. It's not healthy and I hope you can all respect that. Thanks to everyone who has reached out and offered their support over the past few months and meant the world to me. What a fucking loser, dude. You know the darkest part of all of this is? The absolute darkest thought in all of this is deep down, Gus is like, thank you, God. <laughs> that's the, that's the darkest place that will go. What's the story here? What did she do? You should go watch her video on it because my summary, I'm probably selectively biased on what I remember. The big things I remember is that basically her and Gus had a discussion where they agreed that if she ever got pregnant for any reason, she'd have an abortion. She got pregnant and then she started to have second thoughts. And she's like, well, hold on. I don't know if I want to have an abortion now. And then it sounds like she's saying that Gus became very unsupportive of her after she started down that road, which I think is pretty fair. Then she had a long issue of troubles related to the pregnancy. And I think Gus started to to distance himself from her. And she felt like that he wasn't being very supportive through her, it turned out to be an ectopic pregnancy. Meaning I think the egg is implanted on a fallopian tube and there's a high risk of, I think you could die if they go really bad. There's a lot of potential uh, bad effects there. But D Gus basically um, started distancing himself further and further from her. And she felt like he was being unfair and cold and wasn't supporting of her. And my reeling on that was that if I was ever with somebody that started to go back on like an abortion, I think I would instantly, I would never be able to trust that person with anything. I would just, I would instantly like leave Jesus. 
Unlicensed TikTok dating coaches are not therapists. These sessions were not regarding my pregnancy or PTSD at all, but mainly centered on Gus's desire to fuck other people and have me be okay with it. This is like another thing too. Why, why are you releasing? What does this have to do with any part of like your ectopic pregnancy? Why the fuck are you leaking shit like this? Like she is an attention whore. That's all she wants. She desperately like needs like all of the victimization and attention seeking shit that she can get relating to this. Like. I don't know. I, I just think I, it was a big hit piece. Like, that's all it was. I think she just wanted a lot of attention. She waited till after they broke up. She published it. But yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. It is what it is. I don't have any plans on playing God of War. I don't ever have any plans on playing God of War. There are no plans to play God of War. I'm not playing God of War. Please stop spamming my chat every fucking day asking. I do not have any plans to play God of War. Please. When did this shit start? I don't know. Like a week ago, God of War came to PC and every single day, there's like 20 people like, are you playing God of War? I'm not. I have no plans to. Every time I see it in chat, I put it off another week. Right now, we're planning to play God of War in like fucking December of 2045. Also, something Destiny mentioned was that some workers might not vote to increase their workload in favor of some marginal benefit to other workers. They might vote and increase their pay without regard for other workers. Oh my God, he's gonna respond to one of my arguments. Oh, Vosh moment, oh my God. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God, Vosh is actually gonna have to engage with something I've said before. Good job, chatter. Well, then it's a wonderful thing that we have actual existing co-ops. What, what, what is this? What is this idealism? Uh, listen, I'm a dialectical materialist, okay? We have existing worker cooperatives. Okay? The issue is destiny, like a lot of liberals, thinks the average worker is like a dumbass. It is, it's the same contemptuous classist disregard. It's not contemptuous. Oh, he's not gonna engage with it. God damn it. It's not contemptuous. It's factual. A lot of people that are working class don't have the time to read up on dialectical materialism. Oh, well, I'm gonna tell you the optimal way to run, right? A lot of people just wanna go to work. They wanna do their job and then they wanna go home. That's it. They don't give a fuck. They don't, they don't wanna sit there and be involved in the intricacies of the work. Like, a lot of people just wanna go do their shit, get paid, and then they wanna go out Friday, Saturday, go home, spend time with their families. That's what most people want. The aristocrats had for the peasantry ye back in the day. It's a holdover from his libertarianism. <laughs> uh, what if the workers were just really stupid? What if they all voted to make their salary a million billion? It's not about, no, my thing is the exact opposite. It's not about workers being stupid at all. It's about workers voting in their self-interest, which I don't think is unfair to say that a worker might vote in his own self-interest. I don't think that's insane. It has nothing to do with being stupid. Dollars, and then the next day, they ran out of money and had to default. Well, we have co-ops and those things don't tend to happen. Idiot. Jesus. There are managers in existence right now in traditional corporations who are colossal idiots who do fuck over the entire corporation. I'm sure that will continue to happen sometimes in worker cooperatives, but I don't think it's there's any reason to believe it would happen more often. Evidence suggests it happens less often because co-ops tend to be a little bit better at weathering economic crises, which are the real like testing period for businesses. How res Yeah, but first of all, like that might be because of a whole bunch of other reasons, like the difficulty in starting a co-op. It wouldn't surprise me if that was the case because people that start co-ops probably overwhelmingly wealthy or can absorb a lot more risk. <sighs> I'm never going to talk to him again. I wish he would just like, I wish I could have like a two minute conversation. Like, can you respond to some actual arguments in good faith instead of this ridiculously shitty straw manning of like pretending that my positions are so absurd and so stupid? If, if these are the qualities of like the good faith intellectual challenges that he is like throwing at me these days, then holy fuck. Why is he like, do you think the smile here is insecurity? Does that really sound like something I would say? Like that's the, that's what, that's your impression of me. You were a fan of me for 10 years and you think that I would say, well, what if the workers voted to give themselves a million dollar raise? <laughs> That's what you think that my assertion would be there? That's like the good faith analysis of like, okay, dude. I'm pretty sure he independently seeks out hours of content to view. And hours. he's so desperate for my attention and so I'm in so need desperate. of things to criticize that he's out here criticizing worker co-ops for things for which there is empirical evidence that don't happen. Empirical you know? data. Um, yeah, it's like stalker shit. It's really fucking weird, you know? I'm a stalker. Um, this other political commentator that comments on my shit is stalking me. Please make him stop. <laughs> Please, I just want to say things unchallenged. I don't want any critical analysis of anything I'm saying. Please just stop talking about me. Like when he jumped onto a panel to talk with me and then like he spent the remaining two hours of the panel just solemnly, silently, like just sitting there. Cause because the rest of the panel was Sardis asking questions like, how big of a dick would you suck if it belonged with your dad? Okay. <laughs> I jump on panels literally all the time. Fuck, half the time I jump on panels, I'm not even fucking streaming. <laughs> what? Really we have a massive, what? Does he, is he pretending that we don't have like a massive over Overlap in fan bases? Is he just pretending that like we just had? I, I don't know where the where the interest comes from. Like Biden's like a funny old dude, you know. Hillary Clinton is like a detestable. You don't even have to get into like anything she's done or any of her positions. She's just like imminently, immediately, intuitively a detestable person, you know. Jesus. Uh, just like in, in every respect. There are things about Biden that I legitimately like. I think he's a funny dude, you know, challenging people to push ups or whatever, you know. I think he's a funny guy. I like that. Um, Hillary Clinton wouldn't challenge people to a push up contest. 
realize Hillary's a bitch. Jesus. No shot. Vouch. <laughs> Slow your roll. Yo, my hands are cold. <laughs> oh, wait, they're coming. <laughs> We're almost done. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see it. Hold on. Oh, I've said this before too, but No, where are they? If to cap it off, I've said that like Destiny's main issue is spite, and that's No! I, where did the gloves go? What did he did he wash his hands? What's he doing? Slippers on. But I think another thing that he is Slipper? He said his hands were cold, so he's putting slippers on? No. <laughs> Watch, you're getting mixed up. What's happening? Is a reactionary in the sense that he's classist, which is worth bringing up. How am I classist? Doc, you literally grew up in fucking Beverly Hills. You have a degree in sociology, okay? I had to flunk school because I was working full time. How am I the classist one? Also, here's the silver bullet. Vouch says he doesn't consume my content anymore. Anybody care to explain this picture? Really makes you think. When are we getting a review of the Anna stuff from last night? I don't know if there's any point of reviewing it. Oh, she broke after, this time she lasted, I think it was six hours. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Truce is over already? Yeah, she was streaming about six. I think she tried to stream four hours later and then I think Dev Force raided her and then she tried to stream and then she streamed about after six hours or seven hours after our talk and yep, she you know, did her thing, you know. It is what it is. What did she do to break it? Um, She basically started streaming and said that I manipulated that entire conversation and I was a horrible person and she didn't lie about a single thing but I'm like mind fucking her in a traumatic environment in order to get her to say certain things, something like that. She just did the same thing again. I mean, that's basically every single moment is Am I going to therapy with her? No, she did the excuse. You heard in the actual... Uh, good. Okay. You heard in the actual conversation where I was talking to her that um, she was already like making excuses um, why she couldn't. She was trying to pivot away from it. As soon as she started streaming later on that night, she like quadrupled down on that. Basically saying like, oh yeah, my therapist will never do it. It's highly unethical. Like my therapist won't agree because he's an abuser. She will never agree to be in therapy with him. I don't even know if she's seeing a therapist. She might be. I'm just kidding, Dan. I love you, buddy. If she ever actually invited you to an IRL meeting with a therapist, she's probably gonna try to kill you. Well, I mean, we could just do a Zoom meeting. If she wasn't seeing a therapist, why would she say that even her therapist tells her not to talk about you on stream? I think that um, she likes to appeal to authority a lot to make it seem like she's always coming from a place of like righteousness. So like, she'll say like, oh, well, this is what the psychology says. I'm a, I've got a degree, so I know this. My therapist says that. They use like external sources to like validate their own behavior so that they're never in the wrong. I think is why she appeals to that theoretical therapist or psych degree or whatever so much. If she ever talked to you about medication, I find it unbelievable that she's not on something or her therapist isn't trying to get on something. That comment that she made last night, I have to believe she has a degree in sight because she's shown me the degree before. So I, that must be a real thing. That comment made me wonder a lot because she's good at knowing like random terms. She just doesn't really understand how they're like applied or understand the context of these terms. But when she was like laughing or saying something like, why would I be on medication after saying that she has OCD? That's really strange to me because um, OCD is pretty commonly treated with medication if you're in therapy, but especially if you have like severe or extreme OCD. It's really weird that it seemed like she backtracked pretty quickly when she realized how silly what she said was. It might not be diagnosed. No, Dev, shut the fuck up. Don't, you're not here to simp for your fucking queen, okay? She literally is saying that she's going to a therapist for her OCD. She's seeing a therapist for OCD. It's not just undiagnosed. What, that's literally what, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you would say that. That doesn't make any sense. It's completely incongruent with everything she said yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm not saying you're a queen sub. I love you, buddy. Um, hold on. I don't, I'm not believing anything being said in chat, but I could be wrong. If there's anybody that studied this, feel free to correct me. People are saying shit like she studied psychology. She wouldn't know anything about medication. I refuse to believe that's true. If it is, and you go to school for psych, you should just fucking give your money back and go, uh, go get a degree on Wikipedia. How the fuck could you pretend to learn anything about like psychology or psychotherapy or anything and not learn anything about medication or like the, like interaction between medication and people with mental illness. I don't believe that. No fucking way. No shot. Like there's no way. If she, she said she's in a program to be like a, into clinical psychology for like therapy? How would you not know a single fucking thing about like, what is it, psychopharmacology or whatever? There's no possible way. You don't, you wouldn't get into any of that ever. You would make it through an entire four year psych degree and never in your life would you hear about SSRIs or antipsychotics or any other of these classes of med or benzodiazepines. You'd never hear about any of these medications used to treat or any of these mental illnesses. I don't, I, no way, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I absolutely don't believe it. If that is the case, then the education system in this country is in such a sad state. I don't even know what to say, okay? Why do you keep saying this, psychologists don't prescribe. It's not relevant to the conversation. Usually if you, usually, my understanding of it, I'll be a little bit more couched, although I don't think I should be, because I think a lot of you guys are just repeating random shit you hear off Reddit. My understanding is that you typically have a team of people that you work with when it comes time to get drugs. So when you see somebody like spam this comment, like, oh, if you're seeing a therapist, you can never get drugs. Oh, they don't, oh, that's only psychiatrists. Oh, they go to med school. I remember reading this distinction on Reddit. I think generally what happens is, is you have a therapist and your therapist has a team of people that they work with. So if you're seeing a therapist 
your therapist sees that you have like a severe mental illness and you can't deal with life or whatever, then they will talk with a team, like a psychologist and a psychiatrist, and then they will get you medication. It's not like if you're seeing a therapist, you can never get medication. Therapists don't learn anything, but they don't know anything. Like pretty sure that if you see, if you have a therapist, they can give recommendations to a psychiatrist or a psychologist and they can work on getting you medication. Why would you need to know about drugs if you cannot prescribe them? I don't. I don't want to have this conversation. I'm losing your respect in you guys. I don't I don't want to have this conversation more. <laughs> My understanding is that a lot of the medication is cross prescribed. You can prescribe antipsychotics for OCD like this happens. And I'm pretty sure you can also you can prescribe like SSRIs to help for things that aren't just depression. Like there's a lot of different things. Okay, thank you. I'm not crazy. Antipsychotics are currently the first line pharmacological augmenting agents for OCD. Current evidence suggests that among patients augmented with antipsychotics, one in three SSRI resistant OCD patients will show a response. Okay, I'm not, I didn't make that up, okay? You, a lot of these drugs are like cross-prescribed cross other things. No shot, it's just OCD though. No, I'm not saying it's only for OCD, I didn't say that. SSRIs can be used for GAD as well, sure. Probably, SSRIs are prescribed for a ton of different things. Serotonin is not, I see this, I see this because you, <gasps> because people on fucking TikTok and Twitter talk about it too. Oh, serotonin, that's my happy chemical. I, I think even Peach would say things like this, not attacking her, like, oh, I must be long -term. Serotonin is responsible for like a fucking 50 million fucking things in the human body. Serotonin is not just the happy chemical. I'm pretty sure this like regulates like a fuck ton of shit in the human body. It's not just one thing. These, these neurotransmitters are really, 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 really complicated. There's a ton of different things that like all these things do in your, serotonin is a monoamine neurotransmitter. Its biological function is complex and multifaceted, modulating mood, cognition, reward, learning, memory, and numerous physiological processes such as vomiting and vasoconstriction. I think it has effects on your appetite and everything. This, it's a very, very, very complicated neurotransmitter. Pharmacological augmentations that we make for mental illnesses, it's incredibly, comp it's a scattershot. It's really complicated. We don't understand 100% how a lot of these neurotransmitters work. We don't understand 100% how a lot of the medications that we use act on the human body. That's why there's such a confusing process in like prescribing people drugs and different drugs and hopping around and figuring out what works and what, like it's all very, very, very complicated. It's not just a one, fuck, I don't wanna talk about this. I'm getting triggered. Serotonin is complicated. Lots of drugs to be described for lots of different things. That's all I'm going with, okay? <sighs> Jesus, okay. The therapist and psychologist typically have a psychiatrist colleagues they work with if they believe you need medication. Yes, correct, that is good. You know stuff, good job, thank you. You know, I spent my morning defending you, defending your honor. You mean you spent the morning embroiled in drama because you enjoyed it? Nope, that's not it at all. I only defended your honor oh, for an hour. Really? In front of thousands of people. Who was attacking Canada. my honor? Chud Logic, believe it or not. He was trying to both sides this situation. I came on and said, How no. could he both, what is the both sides? What? He said, you know, but listen, you know, you should just uh, look at the other side, you know, you're bringing too much attention to it. I was like, nah, and I set him straight, all right? And guess who was in the chat at the same time, screaming to be let on. Anna? I also stopped that as well. I said, hey, if one of Harvey Weinstein's victims was in here talking to you, would you let Harvey Weinstein come in at the same time? You should have let her on. Should have fought with uh, her. Why didn't you, you could have had a, ta a talk with her, a chat. No, I'll tell you why. Because I, I said the exact reason I said to him why I didn't want her to come on. And it's because <laughs> when something frisky happens, potentially in the future right now, okay? I don't want to be the last conversation on CNN.com that they're fucking broadcasting there. Local business in Miami was the last person to talk to Anna Frills. Min it's before she went outside uh, and you know just fill in the blanks after that but yeah well i told her i thought she was gonna kill me and she seemed uh ambivalent to the idea she could never do it so i feel okay now i don't think she'll kill me she said she wouldn't so I, I will say this i mean i think you pretty much said as much i would put i would bet money she doesn't have a therapist not that she has one and she hasn't brought this up or anything i just think she doesn't have one at all that's my that's my i'll put money on it not that we can ever get to the bottom of this, but that's my my gut instinct. And the, the thing that sets it apart so much is how much she relies on that crutch. Every time anything happens, like, oh, I talked to my therapist about it, and she says that it's this. Mm -hmm. Or anything, so that I'm I'm going and I'm saying that I don't think a therapist doesn't exist at all. Not even a little bit. Maybe. What do you it, think it, it's, I don't know, it's really hard to say. It's possible. The thing is, there's like multiple, she could have a therapist and she just lies a lot and the therapist just can't, doesn't know how much Anna lies about everything. Or she could have a therapist and she tells Anna the opposite of everything Anna says, but Anna knows that there was never gonna publicly contradict her or she just doesn't have one at all and it's possible, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it might be possible that she has one and just doesn't bring any of this up and just, you know, whatever. Like literally doesn't mention online shit at all. And all exactly, she's yeah, yeah. It's possible. I'll, 
I'll say one thing with complete certainty, and I'll put I'll bet you money at this at ten to one odds. Mm -hmm. But I, we will collect from the other person. That three way thing has never happened. No, she was making excuses on stream, and then even on instantly her... as soon as you accepted it, she and, like, tried she to was, change like, this topic. Could happen. She was like, oh, 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 wait a second, I gotta check and see if that's okay. Actually, I think that's illegal. Actually, that's against it. And I was like, yep. I don't know if this has been posed yet, but I would like to Shark Tank this idea to you. Let's just say, what if she started getting emails agreeing with her? saying thank you for bringing this to light thank you for like sharing your story and like informing people about this and uh, and how to avoid it like you're right like you've opened my eyes through this do you think she would stop no i think that would empower her times 10. but she said that's all she wants and that's the only reason why she keeps streaming is that she wants to spread the word i don't think she's like stupid she must go on like reddit threads on like lsf and shit. And well she says every... she's not a stalker she's, i she's don't think she cares comment. that much about that kind of thing I I think being believed is like a secondary thing to just having some access to me. Well, I'm just saying that was one of the excuses that it she was an gave. excuse given. Yeah, but even if it was yeah, the case and that like everybody, I remember her. I think that if everybody her, believed yeah. her, the next evolution would be okay. Well, look, Steve, and everybody believes you've abused me. Can't you apologize for it? And then we can move on from here. I don't That's, know. I just um, my mind goes back to that stream where she was talking to Merle, and Merle's like, "You're gonna forget about him when you blow up as a streamer. Like when you're 100k, Andy, you're not gonna be thinking about him." And she's like, "Oh yes, I will," and laughing mm -hmm. a little. Bit bit creepy but i mean the best strategy now is you just gotta fucking expose it with sunlight as much as you can that's all you can well, do we've already just... done that now i'm probably done talking about it for a bit because it's not he yeah. has he has almost the entirety of lsf on his side like i think his i think he's protected from well that everyone too. knows that she's fucking batshit now what else what else i'm trying to think is there anything left on the anna thing to discuss where do you, where do you think it's going from here at this point it's just it doesn't go anywhere it loops the same way over and over again so is this is this just the uh it's a continuation of the cycle. So there's nothing left to, to do here. It's just... There wasn't even anything left before I called her. I was just curious well, if, how she'd react to talking to me, if it was going to meet my expectations or not. Yeah, she really did pretty good to talk with her, like, all-time worst abuser of all time. Mm -hmm. um, she was pretty calm and happy almost to get on the call initially. She was super happy. Like, we could have yeah. talked for five hours if I would have stayed on the call. 100% correct. Yeah. And I mean, really, the best result here is that you guys become friends again. She would really like that. That's... Or at least, you know, we're civil and you had a conversation. Oh, I remember what I asked. So you unblocked her on Discord. So does that mean that she's like back to messaging you yet? And if so, next bet, when's that first message going to happen now that you are unblocked? Uh, I reblocked her. Oh, God damn it. The only thing that now, can fuck now, me now yeah. are these small groups of dipshit streamers that hate yeah. me. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would like empower her and embolden and her. And they will. They which is too. hilarious because she says she doesn't want to be involved in Twitch politics, like pol political Twitch. Well, oh, she, no, what? now she really what? wants to be. She That's a big goal for her now. She's saying like, no, oh, like, I'm not going to oh. let Destiny bully me out of these spaces. Like, I really because don't. of all these fucking podcasts that she's like trying to get on. And yeah. Shit. yeah. Who would be the dream leftist po uh, podcast with, with Anna on there? All of them hate. So obviously it's definitely that guy who called you the, the G word. That the Gusano be. dude. Yeah. That's that guy. His motherfucking um, eyes are blue. I call Destiny a fucking Gusano because he is. Oh, but he's Cuban. This motherfucker has blue eyes. Not that it necessarily matters, but I can definitely tell you because I can definitely tell you that his family owned fucking a plantation. His family definitely owned fucking slaves. There's a Big tell. Couldn't I just have blue eyes from my dad's side? Isn't that how genes work? Could my mom have a recessive allele or whatever? And maybe I do like, oh, well, actually, hold on. I know this because my mom has brown eyes. D but does that even matter? <laughs> he doesn't know your father isn't Cuban. Oh, I guess. Maybe he thinks both my parents are. Uh, it's the candidate that you interviewed that turned against you. Uh, um, Jose, Jose, whatever the fuck her name is. Yeah. Fucking loser. Uh, something somebody connected me later. I didn't realize it. This top middle person, I didn't know that this person is a trans person. I interviewed them as a congressional candidate it before they transitioned. I didn't know that. Somebody pointed it out to me. I was like, wait, are you fucking serious? I gave this person a free interview, free shout out to their campaign shit, and I posted the interview and everything on my channel. Why are they a piece of shit though? Because they're like, they're running around here calling me like a fucking rapist groomer, whatever other crazy, stupid fucking shit. It was this person. I did a, I did a congressional fucking interview for them. It was a nice interview for like two hours. What a fucking piece of shit. She said that she would go to the Twitch headquarters to get you banned. Seriously. What a fucking loser. And if anybody has a problem with man, you have a problem with me too. What a cringe fucking loser. And I am willing to talk to those giant platforms about this shit because they're afraid to challenge it. I'm not gonna stand for this shit. And I'll say right now, anybody that is the defending the action, and I'll say it because you know what? I don't care. Anybody who's defending the actions of Destiny and what he said, and then having the fallout after this with what he did to Maddie, you're no better than people who support Donald Trump after he started the insurrectionist riots. <laughs> 
Jesus, that's only half in. This person was deranged. What's the dream team? The anti Destiny squad. Oh, the the uh, corn boy. Well, he actual really Jake. Streaming though, right? Oh, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's a corn man too. I want to watch. I don't watch Steve's streams. He's a baby boy. He's annoying. He's like really boring too. He just sits there and fucking like. I don't know how people watch it. I actually do know how people watch Destiny. They watch Destiny streams because they like to feel like they're one of the smartest guys in the room. Because Destiny feels like he's the smartest guy in the room. So if you sit there and watch Destiny, you must also be the smartest guy in the room. But it turns out Steve's not the smartest guy in the room, dude. And he's alone in his house. If Melina's there. She's the smartest guy in the room. Ridiculous. He's just so fucking dumb, dude. He's, he's just like perpetually mad at all times. This guy's been screaming because of a quote tweet that I did for like 20 minutes on a stream, and he's why is he calling me mad? This is just a broader topic in regards to your treatment of people, but specifically you, ha you have you have quite the quite the interesting history uh, with being toxic towards women whenever you have a situation in which and it's not just women it's, it's everybody but specifically women you tend to have a problem with just harassment campaigns like attacking people you brought up two examples okay to yeah. impeach my character so i would like so we could do, do more that you you didn't try to fuck I don't want to drag up either of their personal shit. Then shows. why did you bring both of them up to try to get like easy points in a debate? And then imply that like I try to fuck every woman I talk. Why would you bring these up whoa, for like- whoa, I didn't say you tried to fuck every woman you talked to. What did you, what was the last we thing you We can talk about people you don't try to fuck. You should have an in-depth conversation to corn guy about the anadenims and bad bunny stuff. Damn, it was actually really hard not to go off. This guy is bringing up, he's digging up like some of the meanest and worst fucking people in my life. And then trying to say like, oh, well, why are you so mean to them? All, he was implying also that like the Anna stuff was like really two-sided. That like, oh, well, actually you're the one doing all that. Damn, that it was hard not to go off. People are saying denims. Does denims actually talk about you or hate you? I, I thought you guys just kind of existed and- She like of... shit talks to me behind the scenes and she still probably hates me. She tries to do weird things to fuck with me, but I I don't think she would publicly get involved like that, no. She seemed fine when I met her. I guess that was before all of you guys. Hey Dan, had remember parts. when she came over? <laughs> when she, you were there. Didn't she didn't she didn't she take like an hour and a half Uber and no back? And she where? only hung out for like an hour? To um, get where? She was over here. She came down here. I don't think she was an hour and a half. I thought she was in Miami. It was like and... a long trip back. Wait, she hung out with Dan one on one? No, Tabor Tabor. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Wait, what happened? Tabor snapping <laughs> the professional NFL player was there as well. <laughs> To be crystal clear for every moment. I'm not allowed. Wait, Tabor, when, was she already there when you got there? Or? Yeah. No. She's yeah. not you lying rat. Wait a second. My memory, my memory, it's it's foggy. You I could have sworn. I could have sworn you both welcomed me in. <laughs> my memory is so hazy. The CTE. Oh no, it's getting to me. Oh, great joke. Memories are fading. Great joke, Tabor. Listen, let me ask you. Have you ever been, have you ever been with an older man before? <laughs> Listen, let me ask what is it? Older... What is you just? <laughs> what? what is this video? <laughs> Wait, what was the context for this? Of what? What are you clicking? Of you asking some girl if she's ever been with an older man before? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Wait, where is that click? I'm trying to find it. Hold on. I'm what trying to find it. About? Where is this? Who sent that? That to? sounds completely out of character. What is? The... Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. I know. This is one of Darius's exploits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a Darius exploit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. This was Darius's fault, okay? Oh. It's because he was asking, Darius was older mm -hmm. than this girl, so I was trying to ask, like, how she felt about being mm -hmm. with older men, because Darius was so much older than she oh, was. It was like a six-year age my difference. My friend. There. Okay. My okay. friend. Okay. My friend wants to know if you've been with older men. My friend, I swear, my friend. Tabor, think about how funny it will be if it all comes down to you and you somehow stumble. And then the entire it world is going to be. literally came down to me this weekend and I didn't. Yeah, so I know, I know, but imagine it went the other way. How hilarious that will be. For Why would that be funny? Why are you cheering for Why me to fail? fail? Why would my, the way that I pay, like, for my family to live being threatened would be funny to you? Yeah, Dan. What's You're so funny sick, about that? You You're are fucking sick. sick. You're psychopathic, yeah. Dan. You're sick. My wife is pregnant with my child, who's due in June, and you want me to do something that'll threaten my job security? Tabor, you said fuck? you were really interested in video editing, and that's like a pretty good career as well. And you said yeah, you were last like year when I was unemployed, yeah, it did sound like <laughs> something I could do on the side. No, no, not on the side. Like you can make Steven doesn't edit. have a TikTok anymore, so there's no use for me because that's what I was gonna do. Yeah, Tabor editing. Oh, I'm gonna go. Oh God, snap. Fuck I'm, that. Gonna, I'm going to snatch that handle right now. Do you want to know? What would cause the greatest mass suicide event in the history of all of mankind echoing throughout the world it would be if there was some sort of master hacking event and all of the history and portfolios of every fucking Twitter, YouTube, crypto trader was finally leaked. And you could see that 99% of these fucking losers 
have lost their ass on crypto. They've probably made like three good trades in their life and they spend the rest of their wannabe crypto trading career like chasing losses. It's all they fucking do is they lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. Guaranteed. 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 All these dumb fucks that got lucky on one fucking trade are just losing their asses off. On Twitter and YouTube, they pretend they're talking about, oh, this is a strategy, the double paragon chart or whatever. You asking me if I'm pushing P? Yeah, I'm pushing P. In fact, I'm pushing two P's. I'm pushing Pepe. PP, if you want to call it that way. Damn right. I love each and every one of you frogs. God, it's just such a curious face. Look at Pepe. Look at him. He's like up to some mischievous shit. I love it, you know? And then you look at the, the other one, and it just looks like a fucking demented uh, Admiral Akbar drawn by like a fucking eight-year-old or something like that. Yi is exuding the confidence oh, of a, a seasoned war veteran. Oh my God. Fabian yeah, is going like to say every country is corrupt because he's a fucking ANCAP. I don't know if yeah, he's an ANCAP. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> we don't care about this shit. Like, let's talk about no, what you actually think corruption question. is. Let's talk I'm about what you think corruption is. I'm just asking a simple question, which is, can you Name a Scott. country? No, Scott. No, hold no. on. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm just asking a simple question. Can you name one country? Germany. European... Okay, so Germany has a better system with less political corruption than the Amer than America, right? You disagree Let's... with that? Well, I'm just, I'm just gonna see, like, you know, what, let, let's just do a quick Google. <laughs> let's just do right, a well, quick Google. Let's, 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 let's see what big Germany. scandals let's see what we can um, find. Can I, can I, can I bring us right? back like, to right? Like, let's just, agitators, let's just, let's just bring yeah. us yeah. a quick Google cool. search, right? No, no, no. no, no. I mean, like, if oh. we want to go down this oh. route, I will go down this route. Well, you think about it. Think about where places that got got put in. I just got back. Sorry, I got a memory leak. Who said sorry? Wait, why did you say sorry for him cutting you off? I'm Canadian. Jesus. Stand up for yourself. I just, real quick. Sorry. Real quick though, Americans real quick, like, yeah. real quick. When you were talking to a party made predominantly, overwhelmingly of white I'm people racist. that are, it's not fucking racist. When you say that a majority <laughs> of people. Oh, I'm not by white people then. Good when you were talking. Oh, you triggered the fuck out of him. You used the R word. People. That's like the N word to white people. It obviously okay, makes a difference careful. when it is. He's gonna get off on a tangent. Racial equality triggers you. have white people, I don't think. Just as a real quick fact check. So majorities of Democrats, 69% and independents, 54% support decriminalizing drug offenses. However, most Republicans, 59%, oppose this change, while 40% are in favor of it. This partisan gap is consistent with Gallup polling that has found that Democrats and independents are more supportive than Republicans of legalizing certain types of drugs. Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not, uh, like, I'll, I'll take that as a sizable minority. I do have issues with, with when you break down by political spectrum polling, it tends to do a really poor job and tends to oversell older individuals with that identify as conservative wait, because of the way that they reach out but, it, and they but, also it, but wait, wait hold on hold on really hold on no no wait stop. Out the conservatives. it doesn't what you just said they over represent older people that's because older people are probably more likely to vote okay but we're not talking about just voting all that here. matters is voting you don't matter as a citizen you if you don't vote that's so not fucking true. that's how our political um, system is we're built we're talking about okay, policy well, thank you. oh my god you guys are jumping on single shit and you're like i, I, I feel like only not so erudite is the only one here that is yeah. able of actually like grasping the fucking meta narrative that I'm trying to discuss here, right? If you want to create a, which, so which is hilarious. Yeah, dude, you're fucking galaxy so brain, dude. But <laughs> my fucking keyboard, it's fucking, oh, synergy is fucking me. Oh, yes. It's holding down a random key. What key is it holding down? I don't know. Let's find out. Was it any of those? Nope. Okay, that's all right. We can turn you off. And we can turn you on again. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna buy a KVM switch. One of these days, I'm just gonna do it. What a god awful fucking program.